The TFS Power Tools are a free download you can get from the Visual Studio Gallery. They've been around for a while. You want to make sure that you get the 2010 version that works with Visual Studio 2010. So go to the gallery and search there for it. That's the best way to get the latest version. What it does is adds commands into your Visual Studio, into your Team Explorer, uh, as well there are some standalone utilities that work with the information in your TFS repository so that you have new capabilities and you can be more effective and more productive when you're working with a Team Foundation Server project. I only can show you a handful of these things in the time uh, for this demo. I'm going to show you about um, alerts and work item templates, but there's a lot more. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is alerts. You know you can right click here on the project and choose project alerts and see the alerts that you have set up for your particular server. For me, on this project, I have alerts whenever anyone changes my work items and whenever anything is checked in. These send you an email. Often you don't need to read the email, it's just enough to get the notification of the email and know that you, you want to go into Visual Studio and take a look at what's going on. And they're incredibly powerful. It's a big part of why uh, using Team Foundation Server on our projects is making us more productive and more useful. If a tester adds some more repro details to a bug, you don't want the developer just continuing to blindly work on that bug without understanding that the work items change. There's more details you should take a look again. If a manager changes the priority of a bug, you would like a developer to get some sort of maybe out of band notification, such as in their Outlook, that says, hey, I know you were planning to spend the day in Word writing documentation, but now I need you to go over into Visual Studio and work on this bug that I've just raised the priority of. I love getting check-in alerts also. Um, I know what my people are working on or not working on without having to go and ask them. The information just comes and lands in my mailbox. About the only thing I don't love about alerts in uh, Team Foundation Server is this UI for working with them. And I want to dismiss this and show you the different UI that the t Power Tool gives you. There's this new alerts uh, node, and if I double click it, I can actually take a look at all of my alerts across all my projects at once, and I can uh, understand the logic of what it means to say my work items are changed by others, for example. I can look for inconsistencies, like I have work item alerts on three projects, but I only have a check-in alert on one. It's actually not an inconsistency for me because I'm just manager on the one, but you might spot something unusual when you looked at things that way. And you can also take more control over exactly uh, how your alert comes to you and which things you want to find out about. Maybe, for example, you care a lot about priority changes, but you don't care about some other fields changing. Uh, you can take control of that here. It's a small thing, but it makes a big difference in terms of having a consistent and productive setup with the alerts that you're using. If I want to add a new bug into this um, particular project, you'll see that I have a lot of fields that I need to fill out. Obviously the bug has a title and a description that are going to be unique each time. But things like the iteration, which happens to be a multi-click process for us because we're using some nested iterations, who to assign it to, uh, whether or not I've approved it, uh, this is me, I've approved it, um, there's really not the sort of infinite constellation of possibilities that you see here. There's really just sort of one or two possibilities. There's sort of bug created by tester, bug created by programmer who wants to remind themselves to do something, uh, bug maybe created by a client rep who's taken a report from a client. And for each one of those, this combination of the priority, the rank, whether it's approved or not, who it's assigned to is probably all going to be the same. And I may not want to change the defaults for my whole project, but I might very much like to have uh, editable templates that I can use and especially that I can uh, adjust as I move for example from phase to phase and that's a really easy thing to do with this power tool I just need to get myself a list of bugs and, and what better way than my active bugs query and pick a bug that I think is probably pretty representative of what I'd like new bugs I create to look like this one's in phase 21 it's assigned to neither my tester nor me which is good and it has a rank and a priority that are both one and it's already approved since I'm the one who approves bugs when I create them I like to create them approved so this is a perfect bug to use as a template for all the bugs I might like to add so if I go back to the list and right click it in the list I can choose this capture template and I'll give it a title phase 21 bug with good defaults. 
Now, obviously, I don't want this title to come over every time or this description or remaining work. They're going to be different for each individual bug that I create. But the rest of them, the state, who it's assigned to, the priority, and so forth, I like all those. So I'm going to save this template. Now I have it here under Work Item Templates, and I can right-click Create a Work Item. And I then only have to fill in the title and the description. The rest of the fields are how I like them. And obviously, at any time, I can edit this work item and change my mind about what some of these uh, fields are. This really saves, it's not just the amount of time, it's the what was on your mind. Your head is full of what you want to write out as the description or the problem that you've discovered. And most of us like to fill fields out at the top and work our way down to the bottom. And it's just an interruption or to have to deal with these things in the middle. They're important, but filling them out can actually keep you from putting in a good description or keep you from uh, capturing everything that you'd like to capture about your problem. So using these templates, which are super easy to edit as we move from phase to phase or as I change my rules about who the new bugs get assigned to, um, they let me just skip that small amount of effort and get straight into the, the part where I'm really bringing my brain to the party. There's so much more going on in Team Foundation power tools that are just not possible to list in the amount of time that we have. Download it, install it, start to play around with it, and you will find out how you can really take control of your installation and make it work for you the way you'd like to make it work for you.